Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Dr. Jack and for today's video, we will be talking about chronic inflammation and sort of the details surrounding it. I want you to ask yourself if you know of someone or yourself experiences these types of symptoms. You know, do you experience things like joint pain, muscle pain, as well as some fatigue or brain fog, the inability to concentrate, perhaps some insomnia, difficulty going to bed at night, skin irritation very easily, or have psoriasis or eczema, or some constipation issues, issues related to the GI, some bloating, cramping, diarrhea, any depression or anxiety, as find yourself getting sick sort of frequently, as well as having various types of allergic reactions. All of those symptoms and complaints that I just mentioned actually can be related to chronic inflammation. And I hope that this video will be very informative for you and sort of kickstart your journey and at least bring awareness as to how you can make certain changes, whether it's lifestyle or through perhaps different supplements and things like that and especially through your diet and help decrease the level of chronic inflammation that is within your body and why this is so detrimental to your health and well-being. So without further ado, let's just jump straight into it. The topic of chronic inflammation is something that I see every day in my practice. I talk about this with every patient of mine and me dealing with chronic pain patients. Uh, every patient that comes through the door that I end up caring for is suffering in some way, shape, or form from chronic inflammation. And I thought this was an important video to do only because of the fact that these patients that were able to take the necessary changes, lifestyle changes, and implement these types of things that we'll be discussing in this video, the results are truly profound. And so I wanted to share all of this and hoping that it can perhaps help you, the viewer, um, if you're suffering from some of the similar issues. So to start off with, I think it's important to discuss the differences between acute inflammation and chronic inflammation. So acute inflammation in majority circumstances is actually good. So it's just think about the, if you were to say roll your ankle or if you had a bad bruise or if you got cut or something like that and the area immediately sort of gets swollen as well as red. And that is your body's way of actually trying to bring in all the things within your bloodstream, repair what needs to be repaired. And then ultimately it heals and life goes on. So that is acute inflammation. And in that situation, you normally see it and you feel it. However, with chronic inflammation, it's kind of there and it's sort of this low grade inflammatory response from your body. And over time, it starts to cause more and more damage to your body as well as start to cause cell damage as well as damage your DNA and organs, joints, and has actually been linked to many different types of diseases. And there has actually been a lot of studies that have looked at how it has been tied into things like heart disease, diabetes, depression, anxiety, as well as various forms of arthritis, cancer, autoimmune disorders, inflammatory bowel diseases like Crohn's or ulcerative colitis. You know, you have statistics showing that over half of the United States population actually suffers from some form of inflammation related type disease. And in those scenarios, um, quite a few of those people actually suffer from two different type of issues that have been linked to inflammation within the body. And there's a growing body of evidence on the inflammation theory of disease. This is where we are having a realization that chronic inflammation causes or advances many different types of common diseases. These sorts of things influence every facet of your life. They influence how you look. Inflammation has been tied to obesity as well as skin dish conditions that we talked about. And if you suffer from chronic inflammation, say in your spine or any type of joints, and you constantly bring in all these other inflammatory mediators, it can cause things like bone spurring or essentially abnormalities um, of the bone and create bone growth where it should not exist. And it also affects how you feel in regards to your energy and your mood, as well as how you think, as mentioned before with the brain fog. And chronic inflammation has been looked at in a study of about 1.8 million people where an anti-inflammatory diet was found to decrease the risk of all sorts of cancers. You know, anything from breast cancer to prostate, colon cancer and lung cancer, just to name a few. So how do you know if you have inflammation? Well, one thing you can do is you can go talk to your healthcare provider about it. So you can, you know, go the route and go get your blood drawn and things like that, or you can just try and these measures that we're gonna talk about here and just kind of monitor your progress and see if you improve. 
I can't tell you that if you're someone who is overweight and, and if you're someone who has sort of chronic pain, I can almost guarantee you that inflammation, um, chronic inflammation is playing a significant role in your life as well as your overall health and well-being. The next popular question is, well, what can we do about it? So one thing you can do to help combat inflammation is to take a pill. You can go take an anti-inflammatory, right? It's very common, um, all kinds of over-the-counter as well as prescription types anti-inflammatories. However, these medications have side effects. If taken over a prolonged period of time, they can affect your kidney function, they can thin the lining of your stomach, making you prone to developing GI bleeds, and in some circumstances, if you have bad asthma or if you are on a blood thinner, it's a contraindication to take these types of medications. Um, they can also interfere with things like your blood pressure and a whole host of other things. And so it's important to talk to your doctor before you start taking a lot of anti-inflammatories to treat some type of ailment that you're having. And there have been some studies that have shown that if you take chronic anti-inflammatories, it actually can long-term lead to greater inflammation within your body. And that's because it down-regulates or impacts your body's own ability to fight inflammation. And there's an entire list of other things that you can do. And a lot of it's sort of the things that you've heard before. So one of the things is obviously constant exercise to get your body moving. And we're talking about studies that have shown that even 20 minutes of moderately intense cardiovascular exercise can lead to a decrease in inflammation as well as sleep it being very important. Um, going to bed at the same time every single night and getting the same number of hours of sleep and the most important is waking up at the same time every day as well. You can kind of cheat as to the time you go to bed but various studies have shown that it's actually most important in regards to waking up at the same time every single day. Other common sense measures such as decreasing or quitting smoking and minimizing alcohol usage. Smoking puts your body in a constant state of inflammation and works against your body and causes a whole host of other issues. If you're so interested, please check out my previous smoking videos that I've done, or if you're interested in quitting smoking, which I highly suggest. Alcohol puts your body in a state of constant inflammation as well. Now, there has been studies to show that if you drink something like red wine, obviously in moderation, maybe one glass a night, a reasonable glass, not a big glass, uh, it can actually be beneficial to your health. And also reducing stress is extremely important. When you are stressed and you release a stress hormone called cortisol, it can wreak all kinds of havoc on your body. For that, I normally encourage people to meditate. And again, if you're interested in meditation, I did do a video on meditation. If you wanna get started, there's this great app called Headspace. Also supplements is another important aspect. There have been studies to show that fish oil can help. There's also a spice called turmeric or turmeric, however you wanna say it. And there is a active ingredient in there called curcumin. And there have been numerous studies that have shown the very powerful anti-inflammatory effects of curcumin. One of the issues with curcumin, however, is that much like CBD, for those of you who know, I've done a ton of videos about CBD, they both do not absorb very well into the body. So if you're gonna take turmeric or curcumin, what you wanna do is focus on a product that is ideally liquid so that it absorbs better. And it also has black pepper mixed in with it because black pepper mixed in actually increases the absorption by up to 2000%. And so it makes a huge difference. The one I suggest and the one I take is actually from Costco. It comes in a big old jar and you know, after you drink it, you drink about 15 mLs, comes a little measuring cup. That's about a thousand milligrams, which is about where you wanna take per day. There was a study that looked at rheumatoid arthritis patients who were taking curcumin at 500 milligrams a day and they found that they had just as good relief from the curcumin as they did from taking actually diclofenac, which is an anti-inflammatory. And it's also been shown to possibly help with cancer, prevent cancer, and also in another study they found that taking curcumin can actually be just as effective or more effective than taking Prozac for anti-depression. And then lastly there is diet, right? What you put into your body because we are what we eat and there's all kinds of crazy anti-inflammatory diets out there from Tom Brady's anti-inflammatory diet which isn't really doable for most people because of the fact that he brings in the special anti-inflammatory diet chef that cooks for him whenever he gets injured. I'll explain why he seems sort of superhuman but you know, the average person doesn't have access to those types of resources. And then there's also, you know, you can do like paleo diets, uh, vegetarian diets, the Whole30. 
and all kinds of things out there. So I suggest researching each of these on your own. I will say that in my research, it seems that the Mediterranean diet seems to be sort of most encompassing um, in regards to the diet, anti-inflammatory diet regimen um, that is suggested in regards to what you should and should not put into your body. So maybe start there. And briefly, I just want to kind of dive into some of the details of what is suggested to consume and what to avoid. So to begin with, what should you throw out? What should you try and avoid? One of the class of foods is refined carbohydrates. So these are things like white bread, white pasta, white rice, potatoes, cakes and cookies. All of these types of things will lead to insulin resistance, ultimately diabetes and obesity, um, leading to a chronic inflammatory state, as well as processed uh, seed oils, such as soybean or canola or peanut oil. What these do is basically create free radicals that increase inflammation and damage the cell's DNA. Processed meats, delicious hot dogs. I love hot dogs, but uh, that belongs in this class as well as uh, your morning breakfast sausages and bologna, as well as red meats, steaks and burgers. Try to reserve those for special occasions because they have been linked to chronic inflammation. And then it goes without saying that sugar and high fructose corn syrup, pretty much anything that's sweet should try to be avoided, um, whether it's in a solid or liquid version, as well as processed snacks, such as crackers and pretzels and chips. Pretty much anything that tastes really good, <laughs> you should try to avoid. And this is one that's interesting, a lot of people don't know about, is, the, uh, is dairy, um, especially dairy that is uh, high in saturated fat. And it's a little bit controversial, but things like butter, whole milk, cheese, um, you know, you should consider low fat dairy products. There've been studies that looked at yogurt and you know, yogurt's been shown to be anti inflammatory as well as sort of uh, the good bacteria, right? To replace in your gut and things like that. It seems that it is mainly due to the other quote unquote stuff that's inside of um, the various types of dairy and all its forms. Say the sugar that's added, uh, just go and look inside your refrigerator. I just looked at the lactate milk that's in my refrigerator and it's per cup, there's 12 grams of sugar, which is a significant amount of sugar. And again, sugar creates inflammation. So what should you throw in? What should you consider eating more of? Well, healthy fats, especially ones that focus on omega-3 is very good. About twice a week, you should consider eating fatty fish, such as salmon, mackerel, tuna, sardines, and anchovies, yum. Uh, as well as various, if you're gonna cook with oils, you know, it's, so, it's suggested to use olive oil and avocado oil, and then foods that are rich in antioxidants, right? The saying of eat the rainbow. So the more vegetables, fruits and veggies you eat of various types of colors, the better it will be for you. Um, things such as, you know, the flavonoids, which is creates various fruits and vegetables, their colors actually has health benefits. Um, we talked about that before in CBD, specifically to the cannabis plant, specifically the can flavin A and B and how it's on the orders of magnitude of having greater anti-inflammatory effects and even over-the-counter anti-inflammatories. Fiber is also an anti-inflammatory. And then the berries, whether it's blueberries, strawberry, raspberry, blackberries are all good for you, as well as leafy greens like kale, spinach, collard, and sweet potatoes, broccoli, cauliflower, and then coffee, red wine, and green tea in moderation are also good and rich in antioxidants. As far as nuts, almonds and walnuts are fantastic. You know, you want a balanced omega-6 and omega-3. Too much of say omega-6 is actually, uh, can actually promote inflammation. And so maybe eat a handful a day at most as these are quite calorie dense. And dark chocolate is also good for you as well. And then whole grains are good for you. So things like wheat, rye, and barley. However, if you have a gluten allergy or celiac disease, um, obviously you should avoid that. And then various spices are fantastic too. In my previous CBD talks, you know, we talk about the terpenes or which gives, uh, you know, various fruits and vegetables and spices, its aroma uh, have many, many health benefits and it's no different here. You should also consider beans um, as they are high in fiber and they're loaded with antioxidants and anti-inflammatories. Maybe just don't eat a bunch of beans when you have guests over. <laughs> So this is a topic that I deal with, again, almost every day that I show up to work. And the majority of these patients show up in their 40s and 50s because that's when our cells sort of stop regenerating as much and our various lifestyle choices that you know have played a role while we are younger and if we beat up our bodies a bit more, it all sort of comes catching up to us around that stage of our life. What you eat as well as how you treat your mind and your body ultimately play a very detrimental role into how it all plays out for you. 
um, long term. And all of this sort of plays out at one of the most difficult times, right? I mean, we're in our 40s and 50s and we're all creatures of a habit. And therefore, when you're talking about changing lifestyle, making lifestyle changes, you know, a lot of people are sort of set in their ways. And so it's not easy for a lot of people to, you know, start looking at this and making the necessary steps to lead to a better path of better health and wellness and decreasing all those symptoms that we opened up this video talking about. One thing I tell all my patients is that, you know, no one's expecting you to completely change your lifestyle overnight, but at some point, like most things in life, it's good to begin by taking baby steps, by putting one foot in front of the other. And what's important is that you take it seriously and you set a date. And I tell a lot of patients that, look, just set a date and start making some type of change in regards to your diet or lifestyle and start incorporating healthier habits and replacing the bad ones. And I encourage them to have grit. So what is grit? Grit is your capacity to dig deep, to do whatever it takes, especially struggle, sacrifice, and even suffer to achieve your most worthy of goals. And when I talk to many of these patients, you know, there's a lot of excuses that are made. You know, I'll talk to them and I'll encourage them to make these changes and they're like, oh yeah, doc, I got a lot going on right now. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it next time. Then I'll talk to them next time. And they give me the same excuse. I got too much in life going on. You know, at some point you have to just jump in and make the necessary changes, right? It's sort of like having kids. I mean, there's gonna be no perfect moment to ultimately make these types of big changes in your life. Waiting for that moment, that perfect moment to take advantage of it or to make these types of changes. While, meanwhile, the entire time that chronic inflammation is sort of eating away Way at your mind and your body, that moment may never arrive if you're just waiting. And ultimately, it may be too late because life always has a way of happening, right? So life will always happen and things will always come up and there will always be some type of excuse not to do something. Also ask patients to ask themselves, what are the alternatives? Um, you can either continue to do what you're doing and you will continue to have all kinds of health issues and ultimately lead to more health issues long term, or you can get I don't know, gritty. Gritty? Is that a word? I think it's a word. But anyway, you know what I mean. So with that, I hope you guys found this video really helpful. Um, if you did, as, as always, please be sure to share the video and throw a thumbs up on the video so that the YouTube algorithm will be kind to me. And before I go, also let me know what you guys think. If uh, you, know, you guys know of various health tips and things like that for inflammation, then please put it down below in the comments and help others out. And so until next time, take care, stay safe. Bye-bye, Pura Vida. As well as something called turmeric, turmeric, something called turmeric, turmeric, however,